You're listening to American Dreams with Alan Olson on AM 1220 KDOW. What are your dreams? What do you want out of life? What defines success? So we've been talking with uh, Al Holvey here today, and uh, Bob Ficken has been giving us some insight as a person currently in the, the job market here. And um, let me go back to Al. Al, in your position, I assume you come off a lot of situations uh, like our friend Bob. Right. You're right. It's interesting. Over the This started way in the 80s for me. I was in a major corporation and we started getting taken over by other corporations, the takeover uh, phase of corporate America. And I just saw a lot of folks like Bob lose their positions. And, um, you know, and went through the 90s. And so most recently, just about five years ago, I decided to try to do something about it. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing on this Career Actions Network. It just, it really upsets me that there are people like Bob, there are just, our country has incredible numbers of really experienced senior executives, well-educated, wise people that are sitting on the bench for a prolonged period of time. So, um, you know, that's my passion to do something about that. Well, we had uh, Nadine uh, mentioned during the break that she she wanted to ask Bob a question. So right. we've asked Bob to hang over, and, uh, and and Nadine, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, um, Bob, my question is this. You said that in the networking um, uh, organization that you belong to, you said that you would uh, r- review what type of businesses and comp- corporations that you'd like to work for. Once you determined what corporations you do want to target then how do you reach the gatekeepers or the 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 job hiring people or what do you do to break into that corporation sure it's a great question nadine i think the most important thing uh if you can do it and and certainly exhaust uh every method you have of getting this accomplished is finding someone that can introduce you to the people in that organization you want to speak to I mean, uh, usually the number one rule is you never want to just send a blind resume in. You want to know exactly who to send it to. Uh, if you can find the name of the hiring manager, for example, that's a much better way than just sending it to some you know, blank mail stop or something like that. But the best way is if you actually can find someone that knows people in that organization that can make an introduction, uh, whether it's the hiring manager or not, just someone that's in the organization that can sort of steer you the right way and perhaps... Uh, kind of open a couple of gates or doors for you that will allow you a better entree and connect you to the right people. Great. Thank you. That answers the question. You know, that that's really excellent advice. I think it's uh, it, it rings true that any time a person's out there doing business, typically the business that they, you know, that they, the, how business gets done is it gets done with people that they know, they like, and they trust. Right. And, uh, and and so those relationships are, are, are paramount in this case. Yeah. Al, do you have any? Yeah, I you know, what you just said, Alan, fit is the critical thing. Um, when, Bob, I'm sure you've hired hundreds, if not thousands of people. I've done the same. And it's, you know, within minutes, you can tell from a resume whether the person's capable of doing the job. And then just by sitting there talking to someone, you can see if they're excited about doing the job, so capable, ability, you know, to do the job, excited about it. The third part of it's the critical part. Will they fit in the organization? Will they fit in the culture? And that is the hardest part to determine, and that's a really personal kind of uh, process that you go through. And and a lot of folks go into organizations, they don't just interview one person anymore, the hiring manager, they'll interview five, ten people, because they have to fit with within the culture. So that's a really critical part to it. That's interesting. So do you find in the um, in the course of uh, a person losing a job and the transition, do you find that, there, that, that, that at times re-engineering is required? To, to come back and to make that fit or what, what 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 how do you address that yeah you mean as far well you're talking about people going through a career transition from one functional you know area like hr to another or or let, let's take an example so uh so you have the numi plant recently closed okay. so you had all right. these workers out there at one time they were employing close to five thousand workers here in the the Fremont area and they suddenly come and say look we're shutting down 
Right. So these assembly workers had had set on a line and they learned a specific task. Now they're out in the workforce. And right. They, they may have 15, 20 years of doing the same thing. Yeah. So w- w- what advice for somebody like that? Well, you know, I think, again, it's so job dependent. But for the kind of person you're talking about, uh, training programs, retraining programs are critical, I think. And, you know, they're out there. There's opportunities for people to be retrained. And um, that's a critical aspect. If you're working in a manufacturing plant and you've got to move over to, say, solar installation, it takes training. But there's a lot of programs like that. Um, the other level, though, are the professionals and the senior executives. There it's harder because the retraining is not as obvious. You know, if you're um, a VPHR like, like Bob, you know, the options are, are different. And usually the options, Bob, well, let me ask you, well, what options do you see if you decided that you wanted to move out of HR? What would be options for you? Yeah, and uh, in the, the people that I've tried to develop uh, over the years, Al, typically what I tell them to do, or one of the suggestions I have, is uh, not only the types of retraining and courses and seminars, the kinds of things that you're talking about, but I often tell them to uh, go down and talk to uh, their local uh, charity or charities uh, or community groups that they already support and see if that charity or that community organization that they already believe in and already support needs some help in the area that they want to transition their career to. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to move into um, operations. So I've got a couple of charities I already support and work with. I would go down there. I'd talk to them. And what I would do is I would explain the operational parts of my background and offer to provide that sort of advice to them and counseling to them in exchange for being able to document on my resume and in my cover letters that I've been handling that operational role for them. And I wouldn't get any pay for it. And so it doesn't address, you know, the finance issues that people go through when they're transitioning jobs. But that would begin to uh, paint a different picture of me from my HR role. Uh, so I could get those charities or those organizations then to provide me with letters and documentation of the fact that I've been handling those operational responsibilities and all that right. to help build my resume up, and I would uh, use that to help with my yeah. transition. You know, it's interesting. This segment is talking about what are your dreams. And one of the things, and this could, you know, I can uh, relate a, a personal story here. Um, my career has been general management, running divisions of major corporations and running uh, internet startups. And uh, like I said, starting back in the 80s, I started seeing a lot of really good people losing their positions. And and it, it's devastating on a lot of people. They lose their self-confidence. People get divorced. They lose their homes. It's, you know, it, it's a, a problem. And it's a problem in our society. So when I came out of my last job, I was running a internet company that was doing greeting cards, I just stopped and I said, now what do I really want to do with the rest of my life? And I decided I didn't, I had an opportunity to go in and do uh, internet video, I mean, audio training, music training, training kind of startup. And it just didn't seem very worthwhile. But the idea of going in and trying to help this whole area of job transition and trying to solve the problem we have today in that area just really appealed to me. So, you know, I started and with nothing and, you know, I'm building this company. But it's because I have a passion for it. And the people I bump into, some people like Bob, are people that try to find another position like they had before. But quite a few people are stopping just like I stopped and saying, really? What do I want to do with the rest of my life? And if they can identify a passion, I was lucky. I've been let go or downsized or 12 times. So, you know, I have a real experience in this area of job transition. So I was lucky that I went through all those because I developed this passion for it. You know, I, I love the word passion there, Al, that, that you brought out. And in, in this process of... Uh, you know, it's a transition from one stage of life to another. But oftentimes, you know, in, 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 in my practice, we'll see all stages of life. And uh, 
my mind always comes back to when a person comes to me and says, can you help me through this situation in my life? I'm needing some direction and guidance. Uh, you know, I say, well, before we can help you, let's, let's figure out where you want to go with this. Mm-hmm. And, um, and at the end, at the end point, if we keep asking where you want to go, we'll eventually get down to the point that, uh, because of our mortality, you know, some point in life that, uh, you know, we only have a certain amount of time to focus on and do the things that we want to do. And the 1980s, right when I was getting married, I picked up an article from the Reader's Digest, and this author had gone through and interviewed these people in a rest home. And they uh, they were at the twilight of their life, and, and the author said, uh, okay, if you could do it again, what would you do? And by far, these people came in and said, if we could do it again, knowing what we know now, we would take more risks. And we wouldn't worry about the day-to-day decisions as much as gathering the experience out of life. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, Al, in your case, you renewed yourself and you, you put your mind into, uh, in, in, into a passion that you felt. It wasn't just about the money, but it was about the experience and the networking and the meeting of the individuals uh, that, that, that you saw. This is what I'm right, drawing right. out of that. So. Yep. Uh, um, Al, when, when we met in, in the radio station, you told me you had the key to getting a job, and I really liked your answer. I said, okay, what is that key? Why don't you tell us? Okay, real the real quick key is unconditionally helping other people. Hey, Al, it's been great having you today. Bob, thank you, and, and Nadine. Uh, this is Alan Olson with American Dreams, Key to Life Success. We'll be back with more information on what to do with your job search after this short break. Visit Ellen's website at groco.com. More American Dreams is next on AM 1220 KDOW.